السلام عليكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته welcome back to my channel I pray that you're all in the best of health and iman if you are new welcome my name is Nafisa I am a certified relationship and trauma informed coach so if you're interested in being coached in the relationship or trauma area then definitely hit me up over on my website which i will leave linked in the description box down below 2024 can you believe it guys it sounds so futuristic to me but today's video i wanted to do a video to encourage all of you to make the best of your life henceforth you know we can look at this year and celebrate the fact that we made it to another year alhamdulillah even though muslims don't celebrate new years however at the same time it's also one less year out of the years of your life, the years that God has given you to live. And so this video is all about making the most out of this year and the rest of your life that you may have left. None of us know when our time will come, when God will say, that's it, that's all the time you get here. So what we want to do is make the most out of the time that we do have so that we have the impacts that we want to have. So that one day when we are in our graves, we can be proud of the type of life that we lived despite our mistakes. So here are 10 ways successful women achieve success. Successful women achieve success by remaining driven. Driven is the opposite of laziness and procrastination. Driven is about having an idea, having a goal in mind and striving hard to achieve that goal. Yes, life is about work. I know we're in the soft uh, life era. I know we're all about relaxing and enjoying ourselves, but as well as relaxing and enjoying ourselves, which is also an important part of life, as long as your enjoyment is within the boundaries of Islam, it is also important for us to understand that in order for us to achieve anything, we have to put in the work. We must take away this mindset that somebody else is coming to save us or that it is somebody else's responsibility to make us successful. We're waiting for people to come and give us handouts before we can say, yeah, I can now be successful. No, successful women are successful because they are driven and they have this internal sense of what they want to achieve out of life. And so among those things that I think we should be striving to achieve is the success of our hereafter. As Muslims, we know this life is not permanent. And so we should always be striving for success in the hereafter. That may look like having at least one or two goals for this year and the rest of your life ahead of you, maybe the next five or 10 year plan about the things you want to achieve in your life. Now, if you're thinking that sounds a little bit daunting, I can give you a very simple plan that I was thinking about the other day. You know, there are some surahs, especially for us Muslims, that we've probably forgotten that we were taught when we were young. And so you can make it a plan to say, you know what, each year of my life here on out, I'm going to try to learn one surah. One surah each year of my life. And you choose what that surah is. So at your current age, if you live for another 35 years, that's 35 extra surahs that you're going to know compared to what you know now. That is just one example of how you can incorporate this and make it helpful to you in terms of the success of your hereafter. Now, in terms of the success of this dunya, in terms of the success of this world, we have to think about what is it that we want to achieve. If we're living a life where we don't know what we want to achieve, we're just sitting there waiting, just allowing life to just happen to us, then yeah, life will happen to us. And you'll blink one day, you'll be in retirement age, you sit there, look at yourself and be like, what did I do with my life? Successful women are very intentional about their lives. They set goals, but they also do some of the other things that I will speak about later on that helps them to become successful. So being driven, fighting laziness and procrastination, which happens to the most of us, right? We all kind of suffer on some degree with laziness and procrastination, but you have to fight it. And that is mostly to do with the habits that you set. But life is for the taking for those who want to put in the effort. If you put in your effort, Allah will then bless you. Sitting there thinking God is supposed to just bless you because somebody else is successful and they're supposed to just give me their success or they should be helping me. Yes, we rely on one another. However, that mindset is not going to make you successful because the person you're waiting on to come and help you to become successful most likely have also had to put in their own work and through putting in their effort, Allah then blessed their efforts and surrounded them with people who supported it and so it was successful. So successful women are absolutely driven. Confidence in your ability. 
Successful women have a degree of confidence in their ability. Now, that doesn't mean they know everything. And that doesn't mean they're not at times scared. But they are scared sometimes. But they still do what needs to be done despite the fear. Some of us allow our fears and our doubts and the internal issues that's happening inside of us to kind of get in the way of our success. You have to get in the good habit of learning to fight yourself, right? The biggest struggle you may go through is the internal struggle within yourself so that you can come out of the other side successful. Confidence is such an important skill that we should all try to develop despite the fact that life throws all of its struggles on us. And one of the ways you can do that is by developing competence. Competence is your, your ability to do something well, right? And you can increase that by practice. You can increase that through learning, right? So you learn and then you apply what you're learning and you keep practicing that. You get better and better and better. No one is born of being the amazing person that you see that they are. Some people have um, an edge over others in certain skills, but at the end of the day, in any skill, we can always improve it through practice. As much practice as possible will help us to get better and better as we learn from our mistakes and we learn to improve. Investing in yourself. I always talk about this with you ladies because I know the transformation that this particular um, habit, shall we say, has done for me in my life. If you want to have a successful mindset, you must have a growth mindset. And the two go hand in hand together. It's difficult for you to be successful if you're not willing to grow. And so people who grow are people who invest in themselves. You cannot get everything free, okay? Some things will cost you time. And time is probably the most valuable asset that you have because you cannot get it back. So time, you must learn to invest your time. That may include putting in time to learn something, right? Instead of always getting entertainment and always laughing and joking, you actually have to put in the time, invest your time in learning something that will take you to the, to the next level. It may also cost you money. And so that is why it's very important that you learn to work hard instead of expecting somebody else to come and hand you over the money so that you can attain success. A lot of the times, Allah is willing to open the doors for us. He just wants to see a little bit of our own efforts. But if we're not willing to put in the effort and we're having an entitlement mindset, waiting for somebody else to come and hand us what they got, investing so much, we're waiting for them to come and give it to us for free so that we can then succeed, then we hold ourselves back. So again, it goes back to working hard and then we pray, we ask God to bless our efforts so that we're able to be successful. So yes, that does mean that part-time job you don't want to do, you're going to have to do it because it's going to give you a halal income that is going to help you so that you can then invest more in yourself so you can continue to grow and continue to develop. Investment in yourself is never a loss because that which you've acquired can never be taken away from you. It can never be taken away from you. And that is one of the biggest values of knowledge and the, and the biggest values of developing your skill. Because once you've developed it, nobody can take that away from you. It is internal. It is within you. The only time it dies is when you die. That is why investing in yourself is so important. Anyone who reaches a particular level, they have invested in themselves continuously. And again, I know that mindset is not for everyone. But if you're watching this video, then I know you want to grow. So in order to grow, you must have that mentality of investing in yourself. Take your time, invest it. Take your money, invest it. Invest your effort. Your effort is super, super, super important. You must invest it. You must also pray, as I always say, so that Allah can bless your efforts so that you can achieve your goals, God willing. Understanding the magnitude of habits. I think people who have not understood the impacts that habit can have are yet to succeed. Because once you understand it, it is life changing. It is literally a game changer. Look at your life, look at your routine and ask yourself, what are the things that I do repeatedly on a daily basis? Yeah, we have the regular thing, you know, we eat, we sleep, you know, the basic stuff. But apart from that, when it comes to your time, how are you spending your time? Are you always on social media scrolling, scrolling, scrolling before you know it, three hours have passed and you're like, oh, okay, it's time to pray. You go pray. You come sit back down again. You're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. That is a waste of time. And that is a bad habit. Why is it a bad habit? Because that time could be better invested in helping you to grow. If you have to be on social media and watch things on social media, let it be things that are really going to take you to the next level. Things that are, things that are going to keep you well informed. Things that are going to be educational, 
right? We must be very careful not to pour in so much time into entertainment and have very little time in learning and growing. Another way in which habits can change your life is you want to think about how many hours you're spending sleeping and when you're going to bed and when you're waking up in the morning. Almost every single book where people have researched successful people have identified that successful people go to bed early and they wake up early. Why? So that they have more hours in the day to do what they need to do. But they also serve the needs of the body by making sure that they get enough sleep. So instilling good habits into your life is going to change the game for you if you actually decide to practice it. If you've watched all of these amazing morning routines and they all look nice, but you do none of it, then nothing is going to change, right? A small deed that is done consistently is more beloved to Allah than a large deed that you do only once. That is to show you the importance of habits and how important it is that if you want to achieve success, then your habits are definitely what is going to total up and add up to that success. Success does not happen overnight. You have to put in work day in, day out. This channel, I think it's been seven years now since I've had this channel and here we are. So don't think that you're going to blink and you're going to be successful in whatever it is that you want. I know we're in the fast lane type of world nowadays where we want things like as quickly as yesterday. Like forget in a year's time, I'm not willing to wait. I need that success in six months. It doesn't come that easily. You must put in the work and after you do, success will come in over time. Learning through books. Successful people read books, guys. And I'm not just talking about books for entertainment. I'm talking about books that really help you to learn, to grow, to develop. Successful people are readers. You have to read. Some of the best knowledge and the best, um, um, habits and the best information for you to succeed are hidden in books so you must learn to read you must learn to make use of mentors coaches consultants right you need people who have achieved the thing that you want to achieve you need them to support you but they're not just going to spend their time supporting you when you haven't been someone who has demonstrated the ability to also pour into yourself. A lot of the time we're waiting for information to come to us. We're waiting for people who teach to come to us, to, 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 to prove to us why we should sit down and listen to them. When actually the mindset of successful people is that they go and they are the ones who go and seek knowledge. They're not waiting for knowledge to come to them. Successful people embrace challenges and in fact, they expect challenges. Yes, life is not smooth. And there is no one on this world who has had a smooth life from A to Z and will tell you that they've never had challenges in this life. We were brought into this life. The nature of this world is for us to be tested. And so especially for us Muslims, we have to know that there is no such thing as a happy life all the way through in this dunya. It doesn't exist. That is what Jannah is for. Jannah is a place where there is no pain, where there is no injustice, where there is uh, no, no sense of unfairness, where whatever you want, you just have to think it and it comes to life. That is Jannah. You see, this world was never designed to be that way in the first place. And so if we have the expectation that this life is supposed to be the place where we're always enjoying, where we're always happy, we have all the money we need, there's never any problems, that in and of itself will set us up for failure right at the foundation level. And so what we must know is that there will always be challenges in this life. If you're going through a happy phase in your life, you thank Allah, you're grateful, but know, know that at some point the challenge will come through. That is just nature of this life. It's never one way forever. Likewise, if you're going through a challenging time in your life, know that there is a set time for it and the time will come when you will have more eases. And so that's just what this life is. So therefore, embrace your challenges. Your challenges are an opportunity, right? And this is how successful people view challenges. They are an opportunity for, for you to come closer to Allah. If the challenge is showing up in your life because of a sin you've committed and you are thinking, could this be a punishment? Well, as a believer, you sit, you reflect, you ask Allah for forgiveness. And that does what? It brings you closer to Allah, asking him for forgiveness, seeking nearness to him, regretting what you've done, repenting for what you've done and making amends. That brings you closer to him. And if it's not a punishment, but it's just a test for Allah to see your faith, to see if you know when you said your shahada, did you really mean it? Then again, you keep praying to Allah. You keep going to Allah. You keep asking him for relief. You keep, you pray more. 
you make more du'as, you stand in tahajjud, you you make more du'as, you stand in tahajjud, you pray extra rakas, you fast extra days. All of those are doing what? Bringing you closer to Allah. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there is no believer who is pricked by a thorn except that they are rewarded for that pain. The pain of the thorn pricking them, you know, the thorn is the very sharp um, part of a plant. If it pricks your skin, that little pain, you'll be rewarded for it as a believer. So at the end of the day, we will be tested. Allah said, surely I will test you. The ones before you, they had been tested. They were tested until they said, when would the help of Allah comes? So there is no such thing as you living a life as a successful person where you don't have tests. But we embrace our tests and in our minds, our goal is, how can I ensure that I pass this test? What do I need to do to make sure that I do not fail this test? And where we feel we're weak, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength to help us. Because indeed we are weak. On our own, we're weak. Bottom line, we are. Our strength is only by Allah. And so we ask him for the help. We ask him for the strength, for the patience, for everything that we will need. And we sincerely make dua that we want to pass this test. So Allah help us to pass it. And so in again, us putting in our efforts, Allah blesses those efforts and he helps us to become successful. So challenges, we embrace as successful women because we know that they are just a part of life. Successful women choose their relationships very carefully. Oh, girl, I'm telling you, this could not be a more, a more important point. A lot of our success, nine times out of ten, will be to do with the people around us. Because whilst you're trying to elevate and whilst you're trying to grow, some people are poking holes. Making sure, imagine a balloon, right? So you're expanding, you're getting bigger, you're getting lighter, you're getting higher. There are some people in your life who are poking holes doing their best to make sure you drown and you fall. And so choosing our relationships very, very carefully is something that successful people are very conscious of. They are conscious who they surround themselves with. Now, our family members, we know, yeah, we're stuck because Allah says that we cannot break family ties. However, we can still have some level of boundaries because unfortunately, <laughs> this is the truth right here, Unfortunately, at times, some of your biggest enemies may come from your own family. Literally, some of your biggest enemies may come from families. And this is the things we don't like to talk about. But it's unfortunately reality for some people. And so with those people, I would say you seek refuge in Allah from them and their evil, even though they are your family. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the patience to be able to deal with them. To help you not to, you know, break that family tie. But at the same time for Allah to give you the wisdom on how to handle them. So that they don't impact your life so negatively. But yes, you pray and you ask Allah. You seek Allah's protection from them and their evil so that it doesn't touch you. Because you know, you may have a good heart. But that doesn't mean that that's what's going on in somebody else's heart. And yes, that person may well be a member of your family. So that's family. But with friendships, I'm very strict with my friendships. I guard my friendships very carefully because that is not a relationship that I am bound to keep. So if there are people, friendships, acquaintances who are just doing their best to bring me down, it's got to go. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's got to go. You've got to review those friendships. Sometimes all you need to do is have a good word with that person. And if they really care, if they do really truly love you and value your friendship, they may be willing to change. Because sometimes people themselves are just in a bad place and they may end up taking it out on you. So give them a chance. However, if despite giving people chances, they still keep doing this to you and their impact in your life keeps, keeps bringing negative energy, right? It stops you from thinking straight because now you're upset about that friend who did that X, Y, and Z to you. Now you're upset. Now you can't f focus on your success. Forget your success. Now you're sitting on the couch eating ice cream, being sad and being depressed all day, every day. Why? Because of someone who, who doesn't have to be in your life in the first place. We have to get better at, at choosing the people who enter our lives far more carefully. And that first and foremost comes from a place of understanding that you're the one opening the doors for these people to come in. So you get to choose who, who is pouring into me as much as I'm pouring into them. Right. And yes, we're going to have our bad days. Yes, we'll fight and argue sometimes. But at the, for the most part, this person, I know they care for me. Unfortunately, some friends are about taking. They are never about giving. 
The second it's time for them to give, they check out. But every time they want to take, they come and knock at your door. When are you going to stop being the person who keeps allowing people to treat you badly and yet you keep pouring into them? Because there's only so much pouring you can keep doing in an empty cup, knowing that your cup is never going to be filled. We should choose our relationships carefully. For single ladies, choose the man in your life very carefully. There is a reason why I go on about helping single ladies to choose carefully in the first place. There's a reason why I make videos about giving you the information that you need so that you're choosing wisely. Because it's far harder to deal with a man who's already your husband, whom you know, it's almost like you're sleeping with the enemy. It's harder to deal with that kind of situation. It's far easier for you to learn to choose correctly in the first place. And correctly doesn't mean that person has to be perfect. But it just means that on the, on the major issues, they are good. Learning to do that will really save your life. Because a lot of the problems a lot of people are having is because their own spouses are creating so much pain for them in their lives. So your relationships are going to be crucial towards your success. If the people surrounding you are negative and bad and full of negative energy and entitled and you're the ones who just keep pouring, pouring, pouring and they, they are never willing to do anything for you, you need to review those relationships. But at the same time too, know and understand that people can be in difficult stages of their lives and where you can support, you should support but never at your own expense, right? A believer's never bitten in the same place twice. Finally, I want to say that successful women are wise in terms of their emotions. Sometimes we make irrational decisions because of our emotions. We allow our emotions to get the better of us. And so women who are successful tend to have a good grasp. They're emotionally, not only intelligent, but also emotionally mature. So emotional maturity, which I talk about over on Patreon, is something that us women must continue to learn and continue to develop because it's really one of the biggest determining factors because between a naive young woman and a mature woman who can elevate and succeed because our emotions can be a big trap for us if we don't learn how to manage it very carefully. So those are the 10 success habits, if you like, or ways for you to become a successful woman this 2024 and onwards. I've said a lot in this video and it all probably sounded good, but guess what? Like I say on Patreon, if you don't practice none of the things that I say, nothing's going to change. So my dear ladies, make sure that you begin to put some of these things, at least one or two into practice and see how it changes your life. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please share this important video with other women all over the world so that they too can get benefits from today's video and that they too can have successful lives ahead. May God grant us the most successful experience both in this world and also in heaven when we meet him. Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching. By the way, if you haven't seen this video that I made a couple of days ago, definitely make sure you check it out and I will see you over there. Bye for now. Assalamu alaikum.